Okay, guys, this is the part of the homework uh, whereby I get you to firstly fill in the rest of the words I, I would have told you in class already. Um, so we have four words, worry, confuse, interest, and excite. And so you have to fill in worried, worrying. These are both adjectives. Remember in the first... Um, in the first page, I mentioned that the uh, you can create an adjective for some verbs, adding an ed and adding an ing, not for all verbs, but for some verbs that's possible, and that will make it an adjective, so worried and worrying, just like confused and confusing, interested, interesting, excited, exciting, and then I also want you to write the noun, which is worry, confusion, interest, and excitement. Right, uh, so you have to understand the different word classes, um, and then you want I want you guys to create a sentence using uh, these different words. Okay, so just take note: worry can be a verb and can also be a noun here. Confuse is a verb, but the con the noun is confusion. Interest is a verb and also a noun. Excite is a verb, but the noun version is excitement. All right. Okay, so uh, remember that we want to um, understand, we, we don't want to test ourselves when, we pre when you prepare for your IELTS exam. You don't just want to test yourself. You want to s start to learn, and this is something I've emphasized throughout the class, which is you want to learn and not just test yourself. Learning means using a dictionary, uh, doing a bit of research, uh, correcting yourself, and not just testing yourself according to the time limit. Because of course, in the exam, you will not have um, you will not have so much time and you will not have a dictionary beside you, you will not have the internet to do research, to look at Macmillan, to look at Ausdick, etc. Um, but you do have it right now, so you want to use it and spend as much time as possible learning new things, checking your mistakes, checking whether you're using these words correctly. So the first word I'm going to do is worry, right, uh, as a verb. So we're going to use the dictionary so that I can, you know, show you how to use the dictionary to form a correct sentence, okay? So go to Macmillan, I put worry, okay? Make sure it's the um, verb. And then you look at the different ways of using it, okay? Um, remember, this is, even though this is under the word class section, all right? Uh, what I'm going to show you here encompasses also the second part, which is collocations, the second um, mistake, which is collocations, and the third mistake, which is word patterns. And in the dictionary, it tells you a lot about collocations, it tells you a lot about the word patterns. So when you go to Macmillan, you see worry. Now, what can you use uh, worry? How can you use worry? You can use worry, you can write worry about, okay? So this is a, if you remember the, um, uh, under the word pattern section of, of, of the document, there are, I said, uh, there are three kinds of main patterns for nouns, verbs, and adjectives. One is um, that plus cause, a, a, a noun, verb, adjective followed by that. Uh, it could be a noun, verb. Let me just go to that um, section here, okay? So this is the collocations and this is the word pattern. So as I mentioned here in page 10, I think, um, you have, generally you have, for noun, nouns, verbs, and adjectives, you could have three very common patterns. So it could be followed by that plus clause, it could be followed by two plus base verb, it could be followed by a preposition plus a noun or a verb ing. Okay, so as you can see for this particular word worry, you see that it's followed by a preposition. But remember not, um, you know, a word can be followed, can have more than one pattern in a sense followed by more than one verb uh, word patterns. This is followed by a preposition. This is followed by that, all right? So this is where it is. This, this, These are the patterns here, as I mentioned, okay? About, worry about, about the preposition. That, that is always with a clause after the that, right? So these are two ways you can use the, the verb worry, right? So I could write, Let's say, I could write something like, I worry about, let's just make this a bit smaller.
Okay, I it's bigger. I worry about his future. Maybe a mother saying I'm worried about my son's future. Okay, so it's using the preposition about. You can also say I'm using the different patterns. I worry that. Okay, so I'm using the the pattern using the preposition, and I'm using the pattern using the that. That is always followed by a clause, which is a subject and a verb. See, sh she worried that, and then you have your subject, and then you have your verb. Okay, modal verb plus base verb, right? So, uh, I'm worried that he may ruin his future. Okay, so these are two possible sentences uh, using the verb worry. Right now, what is the difference between worry and worried? Okay, of course, worry here in this way we're using it as a verb. Worried is an adjective, and very often the um, the word worried. Don't forget it's an adjective. So if you want to write a sentence, you you have to write I am. Remember B, as I mentioned for an adjective, you normally put it, the position is normally either before a noun or after a linking verb, which is a B. One linking verb is B. So you have to put M. You can't just say, I worried. Okay. All right. You have to say, I am B verb. I'm worried. Now, as you can see, let's go quickly to the adjective. Um, worried. And exactly it uses exactly the same patterns in a sense that it could be followed by that, it could be followed by an about. So you could you could write exactly the same thing here. I am worried about his future. I am worried that he may ruin his future or whatever it may be. Okay? But the patterns are pretty much the same. Alright? It's not always the case. But here it is. So um Subject, I, B verb, and um, the adjective. Okay, remember the difference between this. Okay, let's let's just talk about the difference between what is the difference between these two. I worry about the future versus I'm worried about the future. Basically, it's almost the same, but there is a slight difference. A slight difference is that I worry is using your present simple tense as a verb, right? What is the present simple tense? This is something that regularly happens. Okay, so if you, if you if a mother says, I worry about his future, she is always worrying, not just now, at this moment in point, in time, but f like almost regularly, okay? It's always on her mind, okay? Um, that, that is the focus, the general difference. The focus of a pres present simple tense worry uh, is regularly, this mother worries about the son's future. But here, I'm worried... The focus is def is generally on now. This is my this is my experience. This is this is what's happening. This is how I'm feeling right now. Okay, so not a lot of difference. Okay, not a lot of difference. Um, now let's look at the difference between worried and worrying. And I mentioned to you before that the difference between an ing and an ed. Remember, you can take take a verb, some verbs, not all verbs. Put an ing becomes an adjective, or put an ed becomes a an adjective also. But there are differences. The ed is how you feel. The ing is what makes you feel this way, okay? It, what causes you to feel this way? So, um, I'm worried. I mean, the ed is always with the I, the person, okay? But what worrying you're going to describe what causes this person to feel this way, okay? So you could say, um, well, you could say his. Um, situation is worrying. Okay, that's why I'm worried about his future. Now, this is using this adjective behind a uh, be verb. Okay, remember an adjective can also be before uh, um, the noun. So you could say this is a worrying situation. So. This is describing this, this is describing this. Okay? Same for this. I mean, you could use this. Um, 
he's if you want to use this adjective before a noun his worried parents call the police or something like that so this is before adjective before a noun remember this is what i'm talking about here um before a noun or after a linking verb b okay so that these are the three words here the last is worry worry as a noun um so remember this is a noun this is not a verb now this is what i want you to take note of um when you have a noun remember as i taught you in collocations okay the second mistake uh remember we we went through pressure and then you you want to get the correct verb the number one most common uh, collocation mistakes when you have a noun and then you students fail to get the correct verb so here you have a noun worry you may want to know what kind of verb remember this is not a this is not a verb this is a noun so if student says oh he worry or they worry or whatever it may be no you are using this as a verb already this is not a noun so very often in um in a clause, an English sentence, you have a subject, which is always a noun. You have a verb, which is a verb. And you could have an object, which is also always a noun. You may not have an object depending on the verb, whether it's transitive. Remember, transitive, you have an object. In transitive verbs, you do not have objects. So the noun could be here, the noun could be here. Very often, the noun is here. and. Um, You need, if the noun is here, you, you really need to know what verb to put. And that's when collocations, uh, the importance of collocations um, come into view because you, you need to know what verb will go with this noun. Okay, uh, let's go to worry here as a noun. Okay, and sometimes the this is Macmillan Dictionary, a normal dictionary. This is not Austic. Later we'll go to Austic. But sometimes, they, you know, just going through this normal dictionary, it kind of tells you what kind of, um, how you can use it. And maybe they'll also give you some clues about verbs that can, you know, go together with, that can, can come before this noun worry. So even in this sentence, local residents have expressed. So they're using the word express, the verb express, and using present perfect simple tense but this is the noun here so you can see express is something that you could use it's a collocation okay if they use it as example sentence is definitely something you can use okay you can use the word express okay um, but if you want to find, see more collocations you can go to worry as a noun and you see you have express here you can have be, be beset by all these are possible okay um and so this is how you you know you understand the role of collocations you you see here that if you're going to use worry as a noun and if it's going to be like that worry comes here then you need to know the verb and you can go to a collocations dictionary what else does this dictionary tells you it tells you about how to use it use remember i always i told you that when when you want to um i go to osdic for finding the most of the time for finding these four collocations but for this Macmillan a normal dictionary normally you know does it quite well and as you can see they really tell you the preposition worry about all right so worry about is possible the pre using the preposition after that the collocation before could be express so express worry about so in the sentence it could be we could write Okay, my mother express past simple tense worries. Now probably you're gonna put the s. Worry is countable and normally in general, so you're just gonna put s. Um, express worries about his late nights. Okay, he spends a lot of time late um, outside and doesn't come home early. So his mother subject. Express, you see this is the verb, and this is the noun. Okay, so you have a good collocation here, 
This is how to use the word, the noun worry. Okay, using it in the object position, make sure you find the right verb collocation. Now, the other ways of use of uh, also writing the sentence worry as a noun, um, be, to be beset by, okay, like to be troubled by, to encounter a lot of worries, okay. Um, so these are all very natural collocations, okay. You, you will see this often used. Um, cause somebody to worry, um, add to someone's worries, all right, east his worries. Okay, so let's use be beset by her. Huh? Um, she was, B, B is was in the past simple tense, beset by worries. Okay, so this is another way to use it. A bit more complicated, um, but these, I've just shown you the process of how you use a dictionary like Macmillan and Osdick to come up with sentences. You have to understand first which, uh, which word class these words are and understand how exactly uh, you know, where exactly they go in the sentence, all right? And use Macmillan, use Osdick, um, find the collocations, find the word patterns. Remember, collocations is the second mistake. Word patterns is the third mistake. So you have to get your collocations correct, especially when you have a noun, get the correct verb. And your word patterns, these are the word patterns I showed you, okay? Preposition, about, uh, um, that plus clause, preposition about that plus clause, all right? This is also the, after the noun worry, you have a preposition here, all right? And then I showed you, I told you the difference between worry and worry. This is more in general, always, you know, something that regularly happens. This is more like, you know, focusing on a noun. I told you the difference between worried, D, E, D, and worrying. This is how a person feels. This is what causes a person to feel this way. And I mentioned that adjectives could uh, come before a noun, like that, before noun, or it could come after a beaver. Okay. I want to point out something related to uh, worry. Uh, something I didn't mention. The way I use worry was I worry about his future. Okay. Um, I, being the subject, who does the worrying. Okay. Um, worry and then this is what I'm worried about okay so this is the thing this is the person all right now let's have a look at uh, Macmillan dictionary let's have a look at worry there are actually two ways of using it uh, well more than two ways but I want to focus on two ways here this is the way I've been using it I worry about something okay to feel nervous or upset because you keep thinking about a problem that you have or could have in the future, okay? Now, there is another way of using it, uh, which is to make... Now, remember, we also talked about transitive and intransitive under word, word patterns, so verbs can be transitive or intransitive. When you are using worry in this way, for example, what I, uh, what I used, I worry about... Now, there is no object because we have a preposition, right? So this is used as an intransitive way, okay? But here we're using it as a transitive way and it has a slightly different meaning. Remember, I just said the way we're using it is I is a person uh, and then you have the future as a thing, right? That you're worried about. But the other way of using it is to make someone feel nervous or upset. Now, so the way it's used is something worries someone okay something worries someone you see let me show you how to use it in this second way um, his future worries me do you see the difference his future is here whereas in this second way this second usage okay which is this one okay um, the I is here, whereas this, this is actually used as a transitive verb, 
because you have an object. This is the I comes it becomes a me here. Okay, so something the thing that worries you, something worries somebody. This is the second way of using it. All right, and this way is the first way as shown in the dictionary. I comes here. And this is intransitive because there's no object you have worry about. You don't have a, a noun and object directly after the verb worry. All right, and then his future is here, not here. Okay, so there are two two ways. It can be a bit confusing, but the dictionary shows you two ways of using this word worry. Now, as for confuse, um, interest, and excite, all right, for the verb, it's going to be using this method, which means something confuses someone, something interests someone, something excites someone, which is basically what I showed here. Okay, something, verb, somebody. Okay, it just so happens that worry, there are two ways of using it. This way is different from this way, but for confuse, interest, and excite, as you will see, it is this way. Okay, something worries, confuses, interests, excites someone. Okay, so let's go to confuse, right? So you can use using this pattern here. Uh, you could say something like this lesson confuses me. Okay, you can't say I confuse about this lesson. No, you would say I you will use confuse as an adjective. I am confused about or by this lesson. Okay? Use a, I'm confused about this lesson, or I'm confused by this lesson. Both are possible. All right? So well, let's just go to confuse. All right? So that's the way you use it to make someone feel they do not understand. So this is the way. Something confuses someone, all right? Uh, this lesson confuses me. Um, if you're using it as an adjective, remember the ED is how a person feels. I'm confused about or I'm confused by this lesson, all right? And I'll just show you this is an adjective after a B verb. Let me just show you an adjective before a noun. This confused person did not like the lesson. So this is an adjective before a noun. Let's go to confusing. Confusing is going to be describing the something that makes the person confused, right? So it's going to be uh, this lesson is confusing. It's describing the thing that makes you feel conf confused. Um, or this is a confusing lesson. Okay, this will be the adjective before the noun. This will be the adjective after the beaver. Okay, and lastly, you will also uh, look at noun confusion. Remember, sometimes you may not know how what kind of verb goes before noun. If you want to use, let me just explain that again. Subject, verb, object, which is going to be a noun here, or your noun can come here, right? So if you are if you want confusion here, then you will need to know a collocation verb because it's not so easy. Okay. Um, you can't just choose any verb, you need to really have a collocation that comes together. But if you put confusion here, then you don't really need to um, think of the verb that goes, well, you could, okay, but um, for normally when you have confusion here as the object, it is more important to get the verb collocation, correct? Okay, let me just show you both ways, okay, confusion first as an object, then you need to find a a uh, verb um, uh, collocation and confusion as a subject. Okay, so first let's go to Macmillan Dictionary, confusion. We're going to use this as an object. All right, so just it will just it will show me some, uh, okay, it shows me some collocations here. You can use it about or over, right? Okay preposition and it seems to there seems to be so this is actually using the there is okay there be so and about over so you could write there is confusion over 
the okay, put over about the accident right so you use the collocation the preposition collocation and basically the b verb and there's a special b verb is there is now let me show you other kinds of verb collocations that can come before confusion go to osdic go to confusion and you will see some of these verbs here okay cause confusion created led to confusion resulted in confusion so you could say something like uh, this accident resulted in confusion okay you see this is the verb all right um, so these are two ways of uh, using this kind of like in an object position okay after the b verb after the result in let's use confusion as a subject so confusion will be subject confusion now if you even if, even if you go to the osdic dictionary it gives you some collocations confusion plus verb so what kind of verb can you use confusion rain confusion arose it's in the past simple tense confusion surrounded something so as you can you know if every time you go to osdic um when you use this you know it's very natural okay even as i read this i know okay it sounds very natural because it's something that you would hear confusion reigned in something confusion arose confusion surrounded something okay so uh you can say confusion surrounded the election of john say a political election election all right so uh this is how you use confusion as a subject this is how you use confusion as more of an object after the beaver but after uh resulted result in okay uh this is confuse something confuses someone as i said this so-called way of using it is going to be the same way you use interest something interest someone it's going to be the same way you use excite something excite someone it's going to be the same way you use the second method of using worry his future worries me but this okay do not get confused by this this is something that you can't use this pattern for confuse as a verb you can't use this pattern for interest as a verb you can't use this pattern for excite as a verb this is a different way of using it okay so it can be a bit confusing okay everything this can be a bit confusing right this lesson can be confusing but uh, this is the pattern for basically the next two um, words all right let's go to interest now as I mentioned before it's gonna be the same way you use uh, this is the way you use interest and excite is gonna be the same way you use confuse okay um, so a verb again this movie interests me all right something interests someone which as I mentioned before is this kind of pattern okay um, interested I am interested in this movie now as we go to let's just go to interest as a verb first we've used it as a verb um, so to make someone okay so uh, o o oceanography has always interested me okay it's just using the present perfect has interested which you can say oceanography interests me okay in the present simple tense um interest someone in something we hope now this is another way of using it okay it's not so common okay um again there are many ways of using words okay but i'm not going to give a sentence for every single way okay you can just look at the sentence example sentence here um, but when we go to interested this is an adjective okay remember one thing you need to know uh as we've tried you know we've, we found out here is you always need to know some kind of word patterns where there's a, the, the word patterns that follow it the prepositions the kind of prepositions that follow it etc okay this one is about or you could use the word pattern that confuse you could use about by um in so interested is always going to be interested in okay or you could use the the preposition remember this is we're talking about word patterns here and uh, in word patterns, I always I pointed 
this out to you before, on page 10, you have these patterns. So for uh, worry just now, you had worry about, you had worry that. Okay, guys, I'm repeating certain things because I want you to, repetition is always good, and I want you to learn this and to really drill it into you, okay? So these patterns are important, okay? So just now we had worry um, about, which is a preposition, worry that, all right? And um, here for interest, that, and worried in, this is a preposition. Sometimes you can use two plus base also. We're interested to hear, interested to know. Okay, so two plus base verb. This is another pattern, but we're going to use the most common pattern, which is interested in. Okay, so you have to use interested in. I'm interested in the movie. Um, how do you, how, so this is after the B verb. How do you use interested as an adjective before the noun? The um, interested, the interested person came forward, the interested person entered the movie theater, the interested person put up his hand, whatever it may be, okay? Uh, interesting, remember something is interesting, what makes, interesting is to describe what makes the person interested. Say the movie is interesting, or the interesting movie um, will be shown tonight using the passive structure, will be shown, okay? And lastly, interest. Again, you can use interest, the noun here, as a subject or use it as an object. Let's go to Macmillan and, to, and see how they use interest as a noun, whether you can get some clues as to the verbs they use. See, they give you some collocations where you have, feel, and interest. And they tell you it's also going to be preposition in, okay? So that's one way you can use it as an object. Mm. She showed interest in preposition plus a noun or verb ing in watching the movie. All right, so this is an object after. So if, if you go to Austic, um, interest as a noun, the verb you see show should be here. You can see she had interest, she expressed interest. All right, and um, yeah. You could say she expressed interest also in doing something, all right? So yeah, so that is, okay, yeah, the next thing I want to do is also use interest as a subject. Okay, I'm not sure whether there are collocations here. Okay, you see? So interest, this becomes subject and the verb is next. So uh, her interest grew. Her interest in the boy grew which means increased all right or waned these are all past tense okay wane means to go down all right so that is that is uh, using this as a subject this noun as a subject this is using as an object okay lastly we go to excite Something excites me. Uh, school excites him. All right. Let's just go to Macmillan. See if we can. Um, make someone. Okay. This is the 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 um, most common use. Okay. Yep. That's basically the way we use it. All right. Um. Excited, he is excited by um, school. The excited boy ran to school. Okay, so this is after the B verb, this is before. Remember, not all the time it could be after, not all the time it could be before. Like some words like, um, let me give you a word that you don't normally, I don't think you can use this word say not usually before now okay so this is a word that you usually put it after the beaver but is not usually used before a noun right um, next uh, school is exciting the exciting um, 
fair, fair meaning like a you know where you go to have fun, um, exciting fair, cost a lot of money. Maybe you have to enter. Um, cost here is uh, this. You see, if you look at this sentence straight away, you know if this is a correct sentence that this will be in the past simple tense. Why? Because if it's in a present simple tense, it's a it it will have a s. Okay, so if I write it cost, and this is a correct sentence, I'm talking about in the past, right? And lastly, noun excitement. Let's go to Macmillan, see whether it gives you some collocations. Um, added to excitement. Okay, um, there was excitement. Now let's go to excitement here. Okay, verb. See, you have verb excitement, so this will be the object. Caused excitement. Um, the movie caused excitement. Now, when you use excitement, okay, you could say caused excitement. What what the preposition I'll use is among the people. Okay, um, this is used as a an object, so you want to use it as a subject. Here, subject plus verb. So, excitement built up, died down. Excitement about the event died down after the death of the main singer or something like that. Okay, so. This is the subject, and this is the verb collocation. All right, so I hope as I've gone through all these sentences, you kind of understand the importance of word class. You understand um, how to you know, create a um, good, correct sentence using the dictionary, taking into account word patterns, taking into account collocations, and using the dictionary, Macmillan Dictionary or other dictionaries looking at the patterns there, looking at what is both, you know, understanding to the dictionary how to write, how to use this word. That's most important is to use it correctly, okay? So I just repeat again, um, is almost for all the four of this of these words, the verb is always something worries, something verb me, worries, excites, confuse, interest. But for worry, there's a special use of this where you can use it this way. For others, you can't. You can't say, you can't say I confused by the lesson. No, you can't say that. You have to say I am confused. You have to use the adjective. Okay. So this is a spe This is something special. Okay. Uh, this use and worried as an adjective normally is going to be after the be verb. Um, take note of the prepositions, the word patterns, the collocations, etc. Um, worrying. All right. And and in as an adjective, as I mentioned, you can always normally put it two places after the be verb and before a noun. Um, so in both cases, I showed you how to do that. And worry is how you feel. Worrying is the thing that makes you feel this way, okay? Same for all this confused, confusing, interested, interesting, excited, exciting. And lastly, the noun, you can put it uh, in two positions. Now, um, let's have a look at worry here because here I use it as an object, right? I use it as an in a sense, an object. Let's 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 go to worry again. Can I use worry as a? Is there some kind of collocation uh, that is mentioned here? See, this is as an object. But there you go. If you want to put worry as a subject, what kind of verb? Disappeared. Proved unfounded. Disappeared. Okay, so worries. Uh, his worries. So you could write something like his worries about something disappeared after his sleep. Okay, so that is how you use the word as an object. You have to find the correct verb collocation. You use the word as a subject. You have to find the correct verb collocation which comes after the subject. All right, I hope this lesson has helped you. Um, make sure you go through it a few times because there's a lot of good stuff I've mentioned. Okay, you're gonna learn more as you go through the video
two or three times. Okay?